Well, 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 Mr. Fancy Bullpup. Welcome back to the Second Hand Showcase, everybody. Coming at you from Super Wet Shooter Supply in balmy Southern Ohio. On this episode, we're featuring a gun that I really have very little experience with. Actually, I have very little experience with all of the weapons that are this format. This is an IWI Tavor, and for those of you, maybe like five of you, that don't recognize what the format is, this is known as a bullpup rifle. So, bullpup is generally a, a term that describes the action of the gun, where it operates, where it lives, the, you know, the fire mechanism, the hammer, and, and, and the chamber and the loading, resides behind the trigger. So what that does is it makes the overall length of the gun shorter. And I really can't convey the idea too much on video if you can't see it here. Not that I'm unfamiliar with the concept of this, but I am actually a little surprised at how stubby and short this gun is. And this has a 16 inch barrel or so I'm told. So let's go ahead, run down through top to bottom and kind of figure it out together. This is uh, chambered in 5.56, um, Israeli made. It uh, takes standard uh, Stenag NATO magazines. Let's see if we can. So this is a, looks like a type of P-Mag here, but it is a branded, uh, it's uh, branded as an IWI, IWI magazine, but I wanted to confirm this takes Stenag magazines without, um, you know, without assuming it. So it is locked back, standard GI metal mag, not a problem. The bolt release is right at the back of the gun. So the idea being you work in the action, strip the mag out, put a, if I can do it, put a new mag in, then you can just raise your hand, how do you do this? Raise your hand right up, hit the bolt release in the, in the gun's chamber. So this particular example does have a, a point Comp M4, a red dot sight, that's a very high quality red dot sight. Uh, it does come with, uh, we've seen one of these already, there's a pattern here, comes with a, uh, uh, Butler Creek flip-up uh, scope covers and this example has a factory ARD and a reflective device what we would colloquially know as a kill flash um, again I don't really think that's something that's needed on a red dot but what the hell it's here it's a used gun it, it is the way it is this example this gun it has a it's a flat top gun 1913 rail pick rail on top and you can see they got the red dot on it and then you see these these uh, iron sights, the backup sights, as you would call them, uh, here on the, on the gun. This, these are not factory, these examples. These are Troy uh, flip-up sights. This gun, I don't know if I can quite show it, has from the factory, and I would deem these truly emergency sights if I can get it to, oh, here we go. It's part of the pick rail. You can take the pick rail, lift it up. That is a truly emergency sight. Would I choose to use that if I was going to run the gun on irons all the time? No, that's probably kind of crappy. And it has a front and back. Let's see here. There's a one in the front and one in the back. But I think um, I give the gun kudos for having uh, factory backups. Uh, you know, as an emergency, as an emergency sighting option. I think every gun should have iron sights if possible. Uh, this example has a single-sided selector lever for a safe and fire. I believe you can convert it from right to left. There might even be an ambi version. Let's see if I can work it over here. There might even be an ambi version of this on the aftermarket. Uh, something you could you could definitely look into. The trigger on this on this rifle, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's fine. It's a service trigger. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm not a trigger snob, but I do shoot some guns that have nice triggers. But this thing is definitely nothing to write home about. But the good news is. There are companies that make aftermarket triggers for this gun, and I believe all you do is you you push the pins out, take the back off the uh, take the back off the uh, the gun, and it's a trigger pack that literally drops in as a unit. I don't think you even have to really drift any pins or do any even basic armor work. It's a it's a unit like a cartridge 
that you can put in and that affects the trigger pull. Again, the trigger shoe is up here. The trigger pack, I believe, as I recall, resides back here, again, because it's a pull pup design. Um, 16 inch barrel, uh, one in seven twist. Uh, I think it's uh, cold hammer forged. Let's see, uh, CL, so it's probably chrome lined. Bird cage flash hider. There is a, there is a little, circular lockout uh, notation right here and it's actually on both sides of the gun this side of it has a uh, has a pin I think you can push and lift it up and then you can rotate it and I'm guessing I haven't got out the uh, haven't gotten out the, uh, the instruction manual but I believe that would release the barrel for a quick change on the barrel mechanism most of these bull pops are well, the AUG is, has a barrel change system. It's pretty simple, and I don't see why this would be any different, and I suspect that's really what that's for. Um, let's see here, what else? That's really um, pretty much it. Uh, this is a used gun. It seems to be in very good shape. I mean, uh, yep, it's uh, used, uh, but it hasn't been shot much. This is, this is in a, uh, in extremely good shape. I'd say uh, this red dot's probably older than this gun. So if you uh, want to know more about this, you can uh, check the link in the description below and you can contact the dealer directly. Or if you would like, you can uh, contact them on the phone, Shooter Supply in Loveland, Ohio. Uh, feel free to visit our website, john1911.com. That's J O H N 1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day. This thing looks like something out of Starship Troopers.